terrain generation it's one of the biggest reasons why minecraft has sold over 350 million copies worldwide every time you play the game creates a completely new experience making it infinitely replayable with countless of things to do so in this video we'll be taking a look on how minecraft procedurally generates an entire world Perlin noise. So if you don't know what Perlin noise is, here is a quick explanation. So it's basically a method for generating pseudo random numbers that look smooth instead of totally random. Since it makes smooth graphs, it creates realistic shapes like rolling hills instead of just like a messy chaos. This is perfect for procedural generation, which is why Minecraft uses it for its terrain and biomes. For every seed, the game calculates a bunch of values for every coordinate, and that is how if you load a world with the same seed, you always get the exact same map. And it doesn't just control the terrain, it affects caves where flowers and trees go and how different biomes are placed. Pretty much the entire world of Minecraft is built from smooth randomness. So here we can see the difference between completely random noise versus pseudo random noise, which creates this beautiful terrain that looks like a hill. And this is something you could actually play on compared to this right here, where you would have to do loads of parkour to get around. Now for the actual explanation on how to make pseudo random noise, we'll start out with 2D noise. Now when people usually hear 2D noise, they just think of a flat slab like this, not actual terrain. But in reality, it actually looks like this. Now there'll be mainly two types of noise I'll be talking about in this video, which are gradient noise and value noise. Now the main difference between value and gradient noise is that value noise will actually assign the corner heights based off of the hash. So let's say the hash outputs, for example, let's say seven in this case for seven blocks. Uh, this ain't even seven blocks, but like this, that will be one corner height and that will be actually taken as the actual height whilst it will just do the same for all these other corners like this. And based off of this, it will interpolate between these corners like this and it will make something that looks like terrain as you guys can see right now i'm trying to make this and boom it'll make something like this whilst actual gradient noise which is more commonly used in perlin or just simplex noise will actually based off of the hashes output it will do some math to get the dot product and of course the overall contribution of that corner towards the end. So basically the hash will select a gradient that it's going to use to calculate the actual uh, height of the terrain. And that is basically the main difference between the two. Now for the explanation on how the systems actually work. So when we look behind me here, it might look quite intimidating with all these commands, but most of these are just basically different iterations or just me storing stuff in case I need them later. Like for example, here I have a fade function, I have an bilinear interp or <laughs> an hash function. Basically, this is just me storing stuff or just different iterations. Like for example, over here we have um, multiple octaves, whilst, whilst right here we have 3D noise, which I'll actually also be talking about in this video on how you can make that. Uh, but we'll be mainly going through value noise, which uh, we actually don't need this one, which is this one right here, and uh, gradient noise, which I'll be talking about this one right here. We also have one in the middle here, but this is just basically me using uh, attenuation or however you pronounce that instead of actual bilinear interp, but I'll just be talking about the simple bilinear instead of uh, uh, this attenuation or however you pronounce it. I'm not sure yet how you pronounce it, but I'll put it on the screen so y'all understand what I mean. Uh, but I'll be firstly talking about the value noise, which is the simpler one and the one I would recommend for you, the viewer. But basically in short, how this works is. So we'll start off with the unit grid cell. Perlin noise splits the entire space into a grid using this math right here you can see on the screen. Uh, the grid lines sit at all the integer coordinates 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. The space between four neighboring grid points in 2D or eight points in 3D forms what we call a unit grid cell. Now we need to find the relative position inside of the cell. So this math basically gives us local coordinates inside of a cell. And this is very important because this tells us how close we are to each corner. And that is exactly what Perlin noise uses for later blending between heights. Now for the hash. The hash is pretty simple. Yeah, the only purpose is to um, make a pseudo random numbers. And 
you can basically make it with a simple uh, recipe as this of course the more primes you have the more variation your um, hash is going to have in its number outputs of course in this hash function, you also input your seed, and this is how you make your terrain generation seed based. Now, something to keep in mind is that you're gonna hash each and every corner, which means you're gonna have four hashes in total. Now, also in the hash, if you want your terrain generation to be chunk based, you can actually add a chunk uh, offput, kind of like the seed inside of the hash. And now for the fade function, I use uh, this algorithm, which is the uh, simplest one, and it's basically all we need, but basically, you uh, uh, in this uh, math function right here, you input your dx and dy to get the um, the fade. And basically, we use the fade inside of the interpolation to make the uh, train even more smooth and seamless. And now for the final step, bilinear interpolation. Basically, you can see the math right here on the screen, uh, but you start off by uh, interpolating between the bottom two corners, and then you do the top two corners. And then at the end, you interpolate between the bottom and the top. And of course, this is also where you input your fade function to make the uh, uh, the output, the noise output even smoother. And yeah, after you've done this, you're pretty much all good to go. And you should get some terrain that looks like this. Now, for a lot of y'all, this might just sound like uh, gibberish, but um, I will have a world download or a structure file in my discord uh, where i'll be having both value noise and gradient noise y'all can check it out for yourselves as well as i do have a fairly nice system uh kind of like or or, or organizing between like the different uh, uh algorithms and kind of steps in how to make your own uh procedurally uh, generated terrain uh but yeah that was basically the fully hash there the math and now i can kind of be talking about a little bit uh, the uh, gradient noise which is a little bit different now the main difference is that um, gradient noise also has the x1 and dy1 for uh, like the uh, the gradients and stuff that it uses as well as like the dot math the dot product math and that is pretty much the biggest difference that and dot product math is the biggest difference as well as it actually does store uh, the different gradients kind of physically like this right here as you can see if hash zero matches zero will give you the grad or the gradient is zero and basically that is kind of the main difference or the key difference that it stores gradients as well as it has like dot product math as you guys can see right here we have some dot product math and yeah that's pretty much the main difference between the two uh, as well as they do give a little bit like different outputs but yeah that was pretty much uh, gradient noise and now for uh, the 3D noise, I'll just be explaining shortly because uh, if you know how to do 2D noise, uh, 3D noise becomes very easy to make because it's basically the, uh, basically the exact same. Uh, so right here we have 3D value noise. Uh, basically it's the exact same as 2D value noise except we just added like another vertex. Right here we have Z0 as well. And then you got Z1 and DZ1. Uh, so basically you just add like another variable to all the math. So you just got to do that for like everything, like the hash and interpolation. But it's basically the exact same, just like another uh, variable. But something else that is different with 3D noise compared to uh, 2D noise is that 2D noise just takes the, uh, the number output and just TPs up like this and starts filling blocks underneath like instantly. Uh, whilst 3D noise basically uh, checks every block in this whole row right here and makes a value noise for it or makes a, makes a noise output for it and checks if it's above the threshold or below the threshold and it'll decide if it's gonna place air or stone. So basically it's kind of like carving instead of just like TPing up and just filling instantly. So that's kind of like the difference between uh, 3D noise and 2D noise. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more videos uh, about terrain generation, of course, just comment down below. As well as, if you do support me, please like and subscribe and join my Discord. Uh, as well as, uh, I will actually have a uh, world download uh, for the uh, the basic 2D value noise uh, in my Discord. Uh, the reason why I won't include the 3D value noise is because it's not completely done yet. And I don't really want to release like an unfinished product. Uh, but I will release the 2D value noise as well as the 2D gradient noise because why not? Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.
Top 